All right, good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to another Good News Club lesson. I am Minister Training Carmen Johnson, and I will be with you today. It's good to see all of you online and hope you and your families are doing well. Uh, to start our lesson today, we're going to begin with a memory verse, which is John 1 and 12, which says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Let's remember that, our memory verse, John 1 and 12. Father God, we thank you for this time and we thank you for what you're about to do with us now, God. We pray that this lesson is a blessing to these young people, God, that they may learn about changing hearts, God, that you will help them to know you in the parting of their sins and that, God, that anything that they go through, their heart can be changed. Amen. Today's lesson is about how Jesus can change us. In the story today, we are going to learn how God changes Jacob. The word up for today is Jesus can change me. So remember to say that Jesus can change me. Jesus has the ability to help us change how we think, speak, and react to other people with our hearts. Think of the oldest person you've met. How old do you think they are? Abraham was the very first of the patriarchs in his family. He lived to be 175 years old. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 years old. Can you imagine having a son at 100 years old? God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky. So think of looking up into the sky and all the stars that you see. That's what God promised Abraham. Abraham's son Isaac was married to Rebekah. Rebekah was having trouble having kids, so Isaac prayed to God. God spoke to Rebekah and told her she would give birth to twin boys. God also told Rebekah that the older son, the twin born first, would serve the younger son. Remember that, boys and girls, what God told Rebecca, that the older son would serve the younger son. This was very different because in those days, the oldest would get an important blessing during a special ceremony and become the leader of the family once the father died. The oldest son would get the birthright. The birthright just means the older brother gets twice as much wealth as the other brother when the father dies. So instead of one cow, the oldest would get two. Rebecca gave birth to twins. The oldest was named Esau, and the youngest was named Jacob. Esau and Jacob, though they were twins, they were very, very different. Esau loved to go hunting and being outdoors. Esau was also very hairy, which was part of the reason why he got his name. His father, Isaac, loved to eat the meat that Esau caught and cherished his son. Jacob, the younger twin, liked to cook and do activities around the house. Jacob had smooth skin. He was Rebecca's favorite and she cherished her son. One day Esau went hunting and came home very tired and hungry. As he went closer to the tent, he thought, Jacob must be making stew. Imagine being very hungry. When you're hungry, sometimes you don't think straight. When Esau asked Jacob for some stew, Jacob saw a way to get what he wanted from his brother. I'll give you stew, Jacob said, but first sell me your birthright. Esau, being the oldest, knew the birthright was important, but he was very hungry. Esau just wanted some food. He was willing to give up his birthright. He gave his birthright to Jacob, and Jacob gave him some stew. Jacob took advantage of his brother. That was not very nice. Remember, boys and girls, what God told Rebekah. The older brother would serve the younger brother. It was God's plan that Jacob would get the birthright, but Jacob was going all about it the wrong way. Years went by, and Isaac, Jacob and Esau's father, grew old and was nearly blind. So he knew it was time to give the special birthright blessing to Esau. Isaac told Esau to go hunt, 
come back and fix the meal for me the way I like it, and he would have a special blessing for him. Esau did as his father told him. Rebecca overheard what was said to Esau and told Jacob, who was her favorite son, what Isaac said. Rebekah told Jacob to trick his father so that he could get the special blessing. Jacob thought surely his father would know the difference between he and Esau. He would feel Jacob's smooth skin and know the truth. Rebekah insisted to Jacob that this was what he should do. So he obeyed his mother. First, Jacob took advantage of his brother to take his birthright, and now he was willing to lie to trick his father to get Esau's blessing. Jacob's heart was not right. Jacob went to go get goats like his mother told him. Rebekah helped Jacob prepare the meal for Isaac just the way he liked it. Jacob went and put on Esau's clothes and Rebekah tied goat skins onto Jacob's hands and neck so he would be hairy like Esau. Jacob pretended to be Esau. Isaac had poor eyesight, so he could only tell the difference between a person by their voice. Isaac was not sure if Esau, if it was Esau he was talking to. Jacob talked to Isaac, but when Isaac felt hairy hands, he thought it was Jacob's voice with Esau's hands. So Isaac asked one more time, are you my son Esau? Jacob said yes. Something still wasn't right to Isaac, but he ate the food that had Jacob prepared and then asked Jacob to come close. When Jacob leaned close to kiss his father, Isaac noticed the outdoor smell of Esau's clothes. He believed that this was Esau and gave Jacob a special blessing. This special blessing showed that the promises God made to Abraham would continue to Jacob's children and grandchildren. When the blessing was finished, Jacob left and Esau had come into the room. Esau presented the meat to his father, asked him to eat it and bless him. Who are you? Isaac asked. Esau did not understand what was going on. I am your firstborn son, Esau. He replied, Isaac was so upset that his body trembled. Esau knew immediately who had come and taken his special blessing. Jacob had taken his birthright, and now he had stolen his special blessing too. Esau begged his father for a blessing, but Isaac could not give it to him. The Bible says Esau hated his brother Jacob and decided that when their father died, he would kill Jacob. Rebekah found out about Esau's plan and sent Jacob away to live with her brother and would send for him when Esau was over his anger. Jacob's lie was a sin and it hurt many people, including himself. He lost his family and everything he knew and had to go live with his uncle because his own brother wanted to kill him. Word up, Jesus can change me. Rebecca and Jacob should have trusted God to work things out for them instead of trying to do it their own way. Boys and girls, we must learn to trust God to work things out for us and not what others tell us to do or make our own plans. God is sovereign. Sovereign means that God rules over everything. He is in control and knows about everything that happens to us. Sometimes you might feel like you have to work things out for yourself, even if it means doing something God says is wrong. Instead of trusting God for help, you might cheat to get a good grade, or instead of letting God provide friends for you, you might try to make others like you by acting like someone you're not. Remember, God is in control of everything. He rules over all. He is sovereign. Rebecca and Jacob should have trusted God's sovereign control. Instead, they tried to work things out on their own way. On his way to his uncle home that night, Jacob slept in a field filled with rocks. He even used a stone for a pillow. Imagine a field full of rocks and you're laying your head on a stone. 
Jacob had a beautiful dream that night. In Jacob's dream, he saw a beautiful staircase that stretched from earth up to heaven. And on this staircase, Jacob saw angels coming down and going up. The Lord spoke to Jacob from the top of the stairway. The Bible tells us what God said. Even though he had gone about things the wrong way and tricked his father to receive the blessing, God was keeping his promise to Abraham through Jacob. In his dream, God promised Jacob that he would protect him and bring him back to the land. He had promised to give Abraham and his descendants. Remember what the dream was, that Abraham's descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky. Did Jacob deserve God's love for him? No. God loved Jacob even though he didn't deserve it. God spoke to Jacob through his dream. Through Jacob's dream, he realized the love that God had for him even though he did wrong. Jacob's dream also made him see how wrong he was and God helped him change his heart. God can change you too. Remember the word up? Jesus can change me. God brought Jacob back to life. God changed Jacob from the inside out. Jacob made a promise to God that day that if he would be with him and give him food, clothing, and return him back to his home, then the Lord would be his God. Jacob belonged to God. Jacob would never be the same again. Jacob was now ready to begin a new life of obedience to God. Boys and girls, God can change you. Talk to God about any problem you may have and patiently wait for him to speak to you. Trust in God and he will help you. Jacob learned the hard way to trust God. Even when we do wrong, God will show us examples of how we did wrong and how we can change them. He will speak to us in different ways to teach us right from wrong and to change our hearts. For Jacob, God spoke to him through a dream. For you, it may be different. God can change your heart too. Before you can be changed to be more like Jesus, you need to believe on him to be your savior. God promises to give you life and everlasting life with him. Remember, Jesus can change you from the inside out. So boys and girls, thank you for joining us today for this lesson. We're going to close in prayer. And that prayer is, Father, thank you for coming to, into our hearts, Lord. Forgive us as sinners and teach us how to change our hearts, Lord, that we may draw closer to you and learn more from you. And God, even when we don't know to trust you, we can learn to trust you so that you will change our hearts, that we may be better people and better with you. In Jesus' name, amen.